your suicide risk. Um, so you want to remember if you're helping someone to create a plan to kind of cope through the next day, especially if you're not going to be with them, suicide is a coping mechanism. We don't take coping mechanisms away without putting others in place. So if you're taking away coping mechanisms, like thinking about how they'll attempt or reducing their access to their method, you got to put others in place. So what are they going to do? You don't only want to take things away. That's not helpful. We want to give autonomy. We want to give power. What are you going to do as well? Are you going to call your best friend? Are you going to just a chit chat? Are you going to go for a walk? Are you going to watch that Netflix comedy special? <coughs> Whatever it is, put in some other tools in place. Things you want to check on, are they ready to talk to anybody else? Do they want to call anybody with you to get the conversation going? Can someone physically be with them when they go home, even if they don't want to tell them yet what they're going through? And help arrange that together. The biggest thing, if they have a method that they're going to use, even if they're not planning on a template, but they mention, yeah, I've thought about splitting my wrist or whatever that may be, um, you want to practice what we call means restriction, which has been proven to reduce suicide rates in the communities that practice it. Ideally, you'd want someone to throw away or get rid of what they would use. That's rarely going to happen. It's kind of a comfort totem, y'all. What you can do is reduce their access to it. So let's say it's pills. Can you go lock the pills in the trunk of a car and then throw the keys into a, a messy 